just and pollster Lee Carter. I'm very interested in what Elaine is saying there and what we're seeing so far from J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, which is focusing on the assassinations and placing blame on Democrats. My question isn't, are they right? My question is, how effective, Anna, do you think that would be as a strategy? There is no doubt that Trump supporters see this as an attack on Trump and want to blame uh, Democrats. Listen, you know, I hear it from my own family where there are Trump supporters. They are incensed about this and think there's this big strategy and plan to attack Donald Trump. Do I think it's effective with everybody else? No, because everybody else has been around for six years and uh, has ears and eyes and remembers the El Paso shooter who killed 20 people in a Walmart, whose manifesto was influenced by Trump. We remember when Trump made jokes at his rallies after Paul Pelosi's skull had been bashed in by a whack job with a hammer. So, you, you know, you can't, you don't get to be a very big part of the problem and then pretend that it's just the other people on the other side who caused this. The other aspect of it, Lee, is that it's about himself which is actually something that Harris tried to focus on in the debate, which is that Donald Trump cares about himself. I care about you and your problems. Now I get it's reasonable that if someone's being shot at, that he cares that he's being shot at. I mean, that's not unreasonable. But I do wonder if, by, if he's trading focus on the economy and inflation and immigration by making this a centerpiece. I mean, look, I think in this moment, it's a, he's making a valid point, and we can debate how bad Trump's rhetoric is, all that we want. But in this moment, it is a valuable question to be asking. Is this rhetoric contributing to the, the, the situation that we're in in this country? And I think there's no question that you can tie it back. We have the shooter who has, has, has said himself and repeated the language that's a threat to democracy. So I, I really think that we've got to take careful look at it. The other thing I have to say is, we have to also question whether or not the, the, the rhetoric that we're using about the threat to democracy is effective. I saw in the presidential debate one of the most effective lines that Kamala Harris had was she called Donald Trump a small man with big consequences. When, Don, when, when Walt, Tim Walls calls Donald Trump weird, those lines of attacks are actually more effective than the bigger threats. Um, and I think that's really important. And, and there is a well. subtle but, difference. But, but here's, here's, and I agree with you. It's, you know, I think we should all question the rhetoric. The problem is that Donald Trump, who I, I think, you know, if you were doing hurricane categories, he's on hurricane category five, whereas uh, the other side might be a two. And Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are not questioning the rhetoric. Right now, because of their rhetoric, because of what he said in that debate, there's been 33 bombing threats in Springfield, Ohio. That would not have happened but for this false conspiracy theory being spread by the vice presidential and presidential Republican candidate. And those Haitians in Springfield, Ohio, and those students and the people that are victims of these threats and everything that's going on there don't have 24-7 a secret service, right? They're on their own. And I, I think it's, it's a valid, like I said, I'm not, I'm not here to debate whether or not Trump's rhetoric is causing its own set of problems, but we have to take a look at what's happening right here. We have a presidential candidate who has been, a, 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 there's been an attempt on his life twice in the last 65 days. And I think we have to question why and what we can do to bring down the, the temperature in this country. And it's, it's on all of us to do it because the language on all sides really has gotten so, so escalated that we've decided that the other side is evil. Not just if you're talking about Donald Trump, we're talking about MAGA supporters as well. I mean, Joe Biden said that it was not just Trump, it was MAGA supporters that are also a threat to democracy. And so we've got to look at all of this together and say, how can we, how can we deescalate it? Let well, I think one of the ways we can deescalate it and Republicans don't want to talk about it is talk about a, a ban on assault weapons. We've now had in these two last, in these two assassination attempts and what, in the last 60 days, we have had people with clear mental illness we don't know what their motive is, but we know that they have mental issues and they've got, you know, this one has a long record, who somehow got their hands on weapons of war, on assault weapons. I mean, how, how does a teenage kid get a, you know, an AR-15? How does this guy get the gun that he got? And Republicans do not want to address the fact that this country is awash, awash in guns that are assault weapons, that are weapons of war that can cause incredible destruction in very little time. I would, you know, I would think to myself that, that if, 
that this that just happened and that has happened in the 60 days should do something to invigorate a bipartisan solution on that. But no, no. The only thing they do is blame the Democrats. We got about 45 seconds left very quickly because I've been cheating off your paper here, which is something <laughs> I've, I've done for, for 50 years or so. The polls, there has been what looks to be a little bit of a shift toward Harris in the last week since the debate. The ABC News Ipsos poll, which is the one that meets our standards at plus six. There are some others that are out there that I won't put up on the screen that aren't, that, that show the same basic thing. Is it palpable yet, do you think? Is it early enough to say that she had a debate that changed the trajectory a little bit? So I think it did change the trajectory when it comes to the general, uh, the general electorate, but it's not seeming to change the debate in the swing states. In the swing states, we're still seeing it's pretty flat or within 0 0.1, 0 0.2. That's not enough to really define it as a bounce. I do think, and I agree with Nate Silver, that we have to look at the next week worth of polls that come in because we haven't seen all the swing state polls come in. But at this point, it seems like she won the, the debate, but she didn't necessarily win the votes that she needed to. Obviously, she had a really good night, but I think we're going to have to see how that translates. We will see. All right, Lee Carter and Navarro, great to see you both. Thank you very, very much. Sarah? All right, this morning we are standing by to see